The new X15s dose fuel right out of the cylinder, so it uses the injectors that inject fuel and make the power cycles. Those injectors will inject on the exhaust stroke, and that's how they send dosing fuel back to the after treatment. But the older X15s, uh, or ISXs, I should say, and then the very early X15s had what was called a doser injector that was bolted onto a cast iron housing, and that housing was about six to seven inches long, and it bolted to the turbocharger turbine or turbocharger exhaust housing directly. And then a flex pipe would bolt to that cast iron housing and go down to the exhaust pipe. And then that pipe goes to the inlet of the after treatment catalyst. So we're going to look at that doser injector that's bolted on that cast iron housing. Uh, and uh, it is a thing of the past. Today, any new engine coming out doesn't have that. They dose fuel to the after treatment by using the uh, injectors and firing on the exhaust stroke. They waited to do it on the uh, X15 because they didn't want fuel in the oil. And they were afraid because it was a bigger injector, injected more fuel. You needed more fuel because it was a bigger catalyst. They were afraid they, they'd have a problem with fuel getting by the by the rings and getting in the oil and fueling the oil. Um, if you have, uh, on the X15 with the UL2 system, the after treatment uh, regens about every 100 to 130 hours. So by the time you get an oil change, you're still under 5% fuel dilution, so it's not a problem. The only time you have a problem is if something goes wrong in the after treatment and for or the engine and causes the after treatment to need to regen frequently, which is, I would say, less than about 20 hours. If it regens less than every 20 hours, you're going to end up with fuel in the oil over 10%. And then you're going to have to change your oil and figure out what's wrong and fix it. But let's look at that doser injector that's been on there since 2007 when the 871 hit the street. The injector has gone through a couple of changes. Mainly, if you take it off and look at it, uh, where the fuel comes out of it, if you have an early injector and a late one, you can tell a difference. The newer injector, the tip looks like it's recessed back into the injector. They call that the poppet. And they did that to stop carboning of that injector. If you have the old style injector, you had to take that injector off and clean it every time you service the DPF. You have to clean it with a brass brush and decarb. You basically brush the carbon off till it was nice and clean. Then you'd bolt it back out with new gaskets. The newer injector with the poppet, you don't have to clean it anymore. It is self-cleaning. How do you know if you've got the self-cleaning injector? Well, watch one of my earlier videos where I talked about the after treatment dosing block that had the uh, check valve and the fuel pressure sensor and then the air solenoid up on top that pushed air through the injector. If you've got that air solenoid above your after treatment fuel block, which is on the driver's side of the engine, if that air solenoid's up there, you don't need to take this injector off and clean it. It is self-cleaning if everything's working correctly. So uh, this injector is held down with two long screws they have uh, 10 millimeter heads, and then there's a fuel line that bolts to it, and it's got a uh, electrical lead that plugs into the engine harness, and the ECM drives it with a pulse width. The ECM learns how much fuel it needs to put back into the catalyst, because not all catalysts are the same, and then it remembers that. And as things wear and change, it can actually dose more fuel through this injector to the catalyst until it gets to a place where there's maximum allowed. And then you'll get a fault code once it reaches that place. And the fault code basically says that the injector is not able to do its job. Uh, but if you read between the lines, it means that it's dosing the maximum amount of fuel 
but we're not getting the heat out of the catalyst. That's a whole nother video. So let's take a look at that injector, where it's mounted behind the turbo. So here's a close-up of that injector. And then the line you see going in the side is coolant. It is water cooled, so it doesn't burn the windings up in there because it's bolted that cast iron housing. On the top is the fuel line that comes around the back of the head from that fuel block we talked about. And in the back there is a lead going straight up and that goes to the engine harness. This is one piece that is not rebuildable. You can clean it and change the gaskets. If it doesn't work, you get rid of it. Here we backed up. You can see this is a newer engine because there's a, a knock sensor right in front of it. And there's the injector with the coolant line that's on it. And the other coolant line comes off and goes down uh, to the um, housing that feeds the EGR cooler water. So that's how it vents coolant through that, uh, through that injector to cool it. Thanks for joining me on Engine Shop Joe. See you next time.